mainly it's a load of shit, you know. It's not rock and roll. Ma maybe some of this death rock, you know, I, I've heard a lot of this stuff. A lot of people come up and say, oh, I, I, I love the cramps, and, and that's great, you know, but then they say, you know, you guys have inspired us so much, and, and then and then they play the music, but it isn't. It has nothing to do with the music we do. It's real dirge-like, you know, and singing these, usually singing preposterously ridiculous lyrics that are the worst lyrics I've ever heard that are about nothing, and just plain bad lyrics, I mean, you know, I would enjoy listening to Cole Porter or something. Did he write lyrics? I don't know. But yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> you know, I, I'd like listening to anybody that writes good lyrics over some of this dog shit that I hear that is supposed to be moody or something like that. You know, I think we have a mood about us, but it's just, it's it's who we are and you know the way we choose to live our life or something. But man, a lot of this stuff is just people. It's just people acting like they're. Uh, vampires or something like that. I would prefer to be a vampire myself and act spooky <laughs> or something like that. It's a, it's a real load of shit. Yeah. I uh, it, uh, may, maybe there is something out there I'm not aware of that isn't a load of shit, but all of it that I've heard is. Yeah. I mean, it's not even like they're taking, say, like you brought vampires, and not that they're even taking that seriously enough, are they? You know, I mean, not even, even that's this sort of sham, isn't it, really? Their sort of idea of what vampirism is, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I think it's uh, it's it's uh, real surface and shallow, and you know, like you know, it, it, any reference we have to vampires, I think it's it, it's what a vampire really is. You know, it's mm -hmm. what a vamp really is. It's uh, it's, it's, it's all, all about sex. You know, it isn't about it isn't about death or being moody or writing yeah. poetry, which a lot of them write. You know. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, that's, I mean, if you go back, I mean, sort of going out there, like, you know, vampirism was about sex, wasn't it? It was like, you know, the Victorian thing about sex and death, wasn't it, really? That sort of things that they were really hung up about, so that's where your vampires come from. But they don't even really sort of, like, the people who were, who were writing all this dirty stuff don't even understand what vampires are about, really. I think a lot of it, a, a lot of people that are into that kind of music are, are into it for the fashion, just, you know, they, I think they like the look of pallor, which I like, and they like, you know, being skinny and wearing black, which I like, you know, but, uh, uh, I don't know, I, I don't care what, I, I don't much care what anybody thinks about what we do, I, I, I think we do what we do, and then what anybody wants to think about it, that's, that's great, I think it's great if, if people are inspired to go out and play death rock because they hear us, that, that's okay, I, if, if they hear our records, and if, if they hear, uh, you know, us, uh, you know, they hear uh, you got good taste and they think that's about death rock or something, you know, that, that's fine if they, if they enjoy themselves, because I think we're entertainers and we make, we, we try to entertain people, you know, if, if the truth be spoken, that's, that's what it is, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's, and uh, people are entertained, that's great, you know. Uh, is, it, is this gothic what, what sort gets of thing is when people start explaining to me what I am, you know. Uh, is, it, is this sort of death rock, you know, tag they've thrown around the cramped sort of name, done you any harm then at all, do you think? Not that I can see, but... Although I think what we are as a rock and roll band, which is a very universal thing, so I don't know, maybe it's a tag that prevents us from being seen as universal as we are, but I can't see how it's hurt us because it's, at least it seems uh, like play, like childlike to me, it's like death rock and roll, and I think that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. I think the main thing is no one has a goddamn clue what rock and roll is in this day and age, period. But we don't have to talk about anything about the cramps, but what the cramps are is a rock and roll band. We play, we listen to a lot of old rock and roll, we like it, but we live in this day and age, we like a lot of things in this day and age, but we try to be a pure rock and roll band, what that is, you know. And I think where a lot of the, the mistaken stuff comes around is people don't understand what rock and roll is. You know, it's 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 too foreign of a thing. People think it has, you know, more to do with music than it does or more to do with uh, this or that than it does, you know. Mm -hmm. But although you're trying to keep rock and roll alive, which, I, which you are doing, in my opinion, well, don't you think, don't you get accused uh, we're, we're of We're trying being... to play rock and roll. I, I don't know how... 
you know, like we're a rock and roll band. We play rock and roll, so it's alive when we play it. And I, I don't know how we. I, I don't know what exactly trying to keep rock and roll alive. I, I've heard that expression. I don't know exactly how alive it is, or if we can keep it alive, or anything else. I know we're a rock and roll that's band. That's what we do. That's what it's we do, and that's are. that's it's, only. We have no choice. It's, it's like you know, it's just who it happens to be. What we are. I wouldn't well, choose to do, do any other thing than be. I, to me, I think the, the the hottest thing you could be in the universe is be a, in a rock and roll band. You know, like a lot of people, they start out playing rock music and then they go into acting or something can't wait to get into something else i'd love i'd love to be in in some movies and I'd, I'd like to be you know make movies and stuff i think that's a real cool idea and everything but i just don't think there's anything you can be better than be in a rock and roll band yeah. so that's why we do it but uh but it makes I, I don't really think we're trying to uh keep it alive <coughs> if it's dead then i don't care because we don't know it is you know if uh, if it's dead the people that uh, think it's dead, I don't care to convert them. You know, I mean, if they if they get converted and listening to our music, that's great. But we, we don't care to convert anybody. We don't we don't uh, we're not you know championing any cause or anything like that. We ju we just do what we like to do, and the only thing we know how to do. Recently, in this magazine, Spin magazine that just came out, they wrote a big a whole issue on CBGBs and that whole scene from back in you know '76 and stuff like that. And uh, we weren't mentioned in it anywhere, and all the other bands were mentioned. We played 50 times in Athens, Kansas City, and once a month for three years at CBGBs, but we weren't mentioned in that art. And, and I asked, you know, one, one of the, you know, the people at the magazine why we weren't mentioned. They said, well, we had a meeting on that, and we decided you guys are just really weird. You're not really, you're not really a punk band. You know, I mean, we played with the Dead Boys, the Ramones, and all that. So, like, some people, you know, some people that are punks don't think we're punks. Meanwhile, we've had a lot of shows canceled, a lot of theaters trashed, uh, a lot of places we can't play anymore because everybody thinks we're the head of the punks. You know, uh, some people think we're uh, not hip enough. We're a country band or something like that. You know, like you name it, and people think it about us. I think there's very few people that 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 really got a finger on what it is that we do. You know. Uh, I don't know exactly what it is that we do, you know. I don't know how much I want to know. The last thing before this was, um, was that, was it Surfing Dead for the, for the movie? Um, was, was like, I mean, that song, you know, zombie exploitation movie, like, I mean, a dream come true or something, or... Well, uh... Had you, had you had it in the can for a long time or what? I, I never... Oh, we wrote no. it, wrote, recorded and produced it in three days. So how did that come about then? How did Dan O'Bannon come to us? Um, we never met him. We, it was an Enigma Records, which ended up coming out of San Francisco, America. They wanted to get us around. Approached us and said, uh, we had this opportunity. They wanted us to do a song in the movie. And uh, uh, they said at the time, this was like the fall of of 84. A year and a half they ago, said, not yeah, quite a October, year and a half they ago. Said, uh, they gave us three days to do it, saying it had to be delivered on October 10th or something. You know, and we, we did it in that amount of time, we're just, don't do it. We thought, well, that's kind of strange. They need it so bad, but they're demanding that they have it quick. I said, well, yeah, so we said, well, okay. First song, we wrote some song, and we said, we hated it. And then we finally, that's, no, it wasn't written or anything. In fact, we hadn't been doing anything for a few months when we approached it. Mm -hmm. um, after we toured. No, well, they just showed us that movie without any music on it, and uh, we were so knocked out by the movie, we just dug the movie so much because it reminds me of like a 50s movie. It has humor in it, you know. Yeah. Since then, it's been marketed as a comedy, although it's not a comedy. It's <coughs> just humorous like horror movies were in the 50s. I was going to ask you really, but it seems like it isn't really. But do you think the um, exploitation movies are dying off, or do you think they're still directed to, you know, got something to add to the genre? No, they haven't really. They haven't really died out. That there are a lot of. Yes, uh, it's inspired, but they, they're around. There's always exploitation. See, the, the early ones seem to me be, be done with a certain. Uh, 
innocence in a way, if you, if you know what I mean. But, but some of the people that were Everything so crazy to begin with, they're still food, crazy. Like Ray, Ray Steckler just put out a movie called The Hollywood Strangler Meets the Skid Row Slasher. And it's, it's great. But he's the guy that did the incredible mixed up uh, teenagers who stopped living and became mixed up zombies or something. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and it's great. There, there, I don't know, there are a few things around really shitty movies coming out that are that are real classics, you know. Uh, Mardi Gras Massacre is great. It's, it's kind of a takeoff on Blood Peace, but it's, it's really great. So you reckon, you reckon there's still enough around that's coming, coming out? Well, I mean, well we, we, know, we, a lot of it doesn't come. That's, that's one thing we miss by being in New York, because we, we do hear friends there. A lot of stuff just hits that 42nd Street and doesn't even make it to L.A. Uh, you know, because a, a lot of that kind of thing doesn't have real good distribution. And it does seem like a lot of the main place in the East Coast or something. So we're always hearing the incredible things that they just don't come out there. Mm -hmm. There, a lot of it is a lot of the thing that's really great about right now that's happening that seems just just amazes me every day is a lot of people are reissuing all these things that came out in the 50s and stuff on videotape now and you can get all kinds of amazing things that you know maybe in the whole country maybe 2,000 people saw these movies to begin with and now they're coming out on videotape and they're all masterpieces you know Rhino Video is putting out a lot of great stuff right now. They've got, uh, they're just doing a lot of this stuff. Uh, Johnny Legend is putting out this thing called Sleaze Mania, and uh, he's got out a movie. Uh, what are those movies? You just, uh, uh, what is that? Confidential. This, uh, College Group Confidential. You won't believe it. This stuff is, it's amazing the things that are coming out on video now. It's all coming out again, and a lot, of, a lot more people are seeing it today than, than ever saw it when it originally came out. Yeah. It's, too, too it's my hope for the future, I'll tell you, you know. Yeah. Uh, we, we because when people see it, this stuff, it's going to change culture. Today it will change culture, just as it changed culture somewhat when it did come out. But uh, today it's, I don't know, it's just so much more intense than anything happening today. You know, it's, and the, it was made to shock people in the day that it came out, and it still shocks people. It's, it's all censored in England, we can't have it. Cause, I mean, like, because America's so big, you can get away with it, I guess, you know what I mean? You can get away with all this good stuff, but England's so small, it's all, like, that blood feast and everything's been banned, you know, you can't allow, you're not allowed to have it and sell it and all this sort of rubbish. They did it with Evil Dead, you know, it, uh, the guy to come, you know, the guy to come to England to fight for his own film. Stand up in court and fight for the thing. To say, you know, this is not obscene. This is not, you know, degenerate, etc., etc. Well, I can't believe that. You know, I can't believe Evil Dead, Blood Feast. I can see that being censored from a country because that is a product of a sick mind. <laughs> that is really there's something really wrong with that movie. You know, not, uh, not to say that everybody shouldn't see that movie. You know, but uh, but like a, a movie like Evil Dead, I can't understand why that would be censored from any country because that. That's, that's a goddamn home movie made by a bunch of college kids in Chicago, you know? I mean, it's not sick. It's 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 fun, you know? You can watch it. It's good and everything, but it, it isn't a sick thing I mean, made it's just, by it's a, just, a warped I mean, it's just mind. Like, yeah, it's just like rebel plastic skull kit with uh, breakfast cereal popping out of it, isn't it? You yeah. know what I mean? Things like that, isn't it? You can I hear somebody it talk like Evil Dead is just the, 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 the apex of sick horror or something like that, and, and <laughs> it isn't. Really you know? I mean, it was it's a good movie, you know. I, I so dig it. You know. <laughs> but, but yeah, I do like. Yeah, I do like several moments in it. I like the moment when when the Band-Aid box floats floats by in the blood. <laughs> do you imagine your songs visually when you're sort of composing or performing them? Do you have a set visual idea in your mind as to how it? <laughs> no, I usually try and think of, you know, this is somebody that's going to just hear this with their ears, you know, sitting in a bar or something. No, not real. I, I think they should they should say something to whoever who, who's listening to them in the words, you know, I mean, they, they, should, they should be about something. They shouldn't just be a bunch of goofy words that make some kind of mood, you know, or something, you know. Uh, 
but uh, but you get that though, listen to other people's records so you get a lot of images in your head and stuff like that do you? sure I mean I, I'm sure they should make images in people's heads but that that's 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 the on the, that's the job of the listener to make their images you know I, I don't think too much of images this album title date with Elvis uh, what was the concept beyond that title I mean is it a tribute or is it a piece of necrophilia that's what we wanted to know I think it's, tribute. yeah, it's a tribute, but it's also kind of, it's also kind of stands for kind of something like what, what a date with Elvis would have been really like, you know, because he had an album called A Date with Elvis. He had an album called that. Yeah. Really? Yeah, he's sitting in a, it's, it's, half of it is all of his son's stuff. It was one of his first albums that came out with RCA, you know, uh, that reissue, uh, all of his son's stuff, all his son's singles are on it, and, and a couple of, uh, came out in 58 or 59, but, uh. Um, it, it's like what a date with Elvis r really would be like, you know. I mean, he, he, you know, if he had a date with Elvis, what really happened is he'd give you pills and stuff like that. And he'd, uh, uh, you know, read to you from religious <laughs> books. <laughs> His books are all uh, on the cover of his favorite book. Yeah. The books that he read to girls, he'd, you know, he'd get groupies and stuff, and he'd read to them from these religious books. <laughs> it's a there go, yikes! What? A, a real date with Elvis was, you know, a sick deal, you know. <laughs> it wasn't a convertible or anything like that. What do you think of all this um, never-ending ex Elvis exploitation that the media puts out? Like what? Well, like what? Like, where is it? I might not be aware. I mean, there's a... Oh, I was just at the supermarket. All this stuff, you know, garbage like this. The Curse of Elvis? Hey, that sounds good. <laughs> Damn, we were just at the supermarket <laughs> getting this beer. Yeah, I hope they still have it. Will Priscilla ever find peace of mind? What, what do you think about it? He wouldn't fuck her, could you imagine that? <laughs> what a, what a sick person. I think it's great. I think he probably thought it was I, great, too. I, I'd, I'd I, love to be in those magazines myself. Because I, I, I always hear about these people suing National Enquirer or something. I think it's an honor. I, I wish that people would write about us in this magazine instead of putting out bootlegs. I wish they'd channel that energy towards getting us in these magazines. They can write whatever they want. Now, we wrote a script for this movie he's describing a long time ago. We, <laughs> should, we should make our own movies. We should be able to, and I hope that someday we will. Gets, We've written this gets, already. It's called stage, Aloha think, from Hell, the movie. Yeah, he goes back on... I can start. I can, I can tell you the whole movie. I can recite it to you right now. Yeah, I had a written, the past, whole deal, yeah. holding it open at a bar. Ivy was dancing yeah, in the bar. Me and Nate were sitting at the bar. I, I can't remember. Then we got in the chicken run, and, and, and the jukebox was playing... Uh, do the clown, and uh, I'm I'm sitting there looking at or, or, I forget one of us is looking at Ivy dancing and saying wow wow, and and then I was saying wow wow like that on and on it shows our face and keep getting closer up and then going and then one of us says wow boy could he sing like that <laughs> and, and, and then all of a sudden somebody throws us through a window and we land on on, on the hood of this um, oh a fight breaks out for no reason. I always love it in movies when fights breaks out for no reason. The Creeping Terror a fight broke out for no reason at all. Uh, have you ever seen The Creeping Terror? Yeah, yeah. The rug car. With the rug, yeah. Uh, uh, a fight breaks out. A fight breaks out for no reason at all. And um, well, I forget it was me or Nick get thrown through a window and land on on top of a uh, this car hood. And this gang of girls outside is really pissed because we land on top there, and they char ch challenge us to a chicken run. We, we both get, and we get in our car, and they get in their cars, and we head for this mountain. And of course, we're all too cool to a chicken out, so we so both cars crash into the mountain <laughs> and blow up into flames and everything, and then we all go to hell where we meet Elvis. Do people get upset about it then? I mean, do they get upset about you know the sexual and then you? The sexual innuendo of it all. I guess it makes people uncomfortable because people are always trying to to act like 
like it isn't sexual or there's some kind of reason, you know, there's some kind of like, you know, like, like asking me, why would I write, why did I write what's inside a girl? Why did you write those words, you know? I mean, it's spelled out pretty clear, you know, I mean, I, I don't know. You know. I mean, sex is um, a part of rock and roll, surely, I suppose. Well, I think it's, it's, it's you know... It, it, it's with rock and roll in it's, life. Yes, it's exactly the same thing. It equals rock and roll. Rock, rock and roll was a term that meant fucking. That's the first purest term. Before music was dragged into it, it was it, in, in rhythm and blues music, or, or country <coughs> blues music even, you know, like years before rock and roll became a dance or a musical thing, it, 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 it meant getting in bed with a girl and having sex. That's, that's what it meant. Then it became a dance or it became music or something else it was named. But I mean, to, to me, rock and roll means fucking and nothing else. You know, then you can have m music, which, which is like music you play to it, you know, or something. But I mean, like, it's fun, you know, it's, it's, good. it's really good to have rhythm along with that, you know, but... Uh, yeah, a little candles and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you so get some wine get some champagne wine. and some music. Yeah. <laughs> I don't understand that. That's why I, when I was talking earlier, I was saying that people don't know what rock and roll is, you know. It's a soundtrack for sex, you know. It has it, nothing to do with, like, what, what 9,000 9, people things that come out every year are called rock music or rock or something and it doesn't have anything to do with music or anything like that it's a it's a it's an attitude you know it, 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 it's a well judging by what you hear today do you, do you think that not an attitude you know because you don't think when you're fucking you know <laughs> <what> I mean <laughs> judging by what popular music you hear today or whatever do you think the world's gone impotent mm -hmm. wow yeah that's, that's a pretty good idea. So you, you maybe you, it's maybe it's a momentary sickness. Did, maybe did you, did you uh, when you were watching? Did, you know, if you watched that movie last night, you saw the uh, the commercial. We can cure this though. The uh, the um, last night the commercial, all the commercials in that movie was for the Los Angeles uh, uh, Hospital for Impotence, and it's called. Uh, Wow, I understand. It's great. It was on for those entire two movies. Maybe it's on now. It, what was that, Channel 9? <laughs> wow. hey, it's what it is. You're, you're watching TV. It's X-rated. You know what we your wife's doing right you're now. You're being censored in this hotel. <laughs> what do they say? It's, uh, I can't, God, I wish I could remember it. The, uh, the title of what it was that was something like Butterfly School for Male Impotence or something, you know, or Hospital for Male Impotence. It's amazing. They had it every 10 minutes all night last night on. I think we should ship the whole country down there. <laughs> <laughs> it was, a, it, it's amazing what they say because they're saying, you know, we have, uh, he said, we have researched, they were saying that they had researched uh, among the black African tribes of Africa and found this amazing cure for male impotence and everything like that. You said that? Yeah. I couldn't believe it. I was sitting there watching saying, wow, man. Oh, it was great. Now, we may be on to something here. We may be able to ship the country down there and get this straightened out. So do you think that, that a date with Elvis could act like as some kind of aphrodisiac, man. Are you, the, are you the Spanish fly in this sort of uh, yeah. today's m today's present music scene? You gotta be, but you know, if everybody's not too far gone, you know, hard to tell you. I'm a Spanish fly. I spell it F L Y, man. <laughs> <laughs> the thing I don't like about underground comics is is they're totally free. They have no inhibitions, and they're not. Um, controlled by a censor. I, I like that. I, I think the best comics that ever came out were the ones where uh, they were afraid to do some things, so they snuck in things. Because that made violence sick, and it made sex dirty and everything else. And, and, and in, in underground comics, sex isn't really dirty or, you know, it's, or, or, or uh, 
violence isn't really that violent. Everything is like allowed. You know, I do like it. You know, when things, when uh, there are hidden meanings and things, you know, it, it, it makes it, it puts things in proper perspective. You know, like like if the world was an underground co comic, there'd be people fucking out in that inter intersection, not even thinking <laughs> about it right now. You know, heaven forbid. But if the cramps were, were OD. What would they like to be carved on their tombstone? Right. Died of old age. <laughs> <laughs> this is your part in shot. Here we go. Pretty classical. Oh, what? I just don't want to go down in a plane crash like Ricky Nelson. When, I, when we heard about Ricky Nelson dying, uh, I had heard about it on TV on the headline station where they just tell headlines and they said, uh, you know, uh, no, the, the radio, price on the radio. Well, they said the price of corn has gone up two cents. Ricky Nelson is dead, and elephants have stampeded in Africa. You know, they don't they don't say <laughs> they don't say what the thing. So we didn't know how he died. And the first thing I said, she said, Ricky Nelson's dead. And I said, how'd he die? And she goes, I don't know yet. You know, I have to watch the news. And I said, uh, I hope he died of an OD. I, I hope he didn't, uh, I hope he didn't die uh, in a plane crash. Because everybody's dying. I have a very, a big fear of dying in a plane crash. And uh, he was my all-time idol. And he died in a plane crash. I know I'm going to die in a plane crash. I used to think I was going to die in an automobile accident. But now I think I'm going to die in a plane crash. Oh, <laughs> no. I think you have to die the way you expect I, ho yeah, I hope I die of old age. Yeah. That's what I want to die of. I don't want to live half die young and leave a beautiful memory. I, I want to I want to live fast sometimes, really slow sometimes, live to be real old and have everybody hate me when I die. <laughs> <laughs> You're fine with me.